Hey guys, it's Rudar here. Today we're gonna go over how to be DHDK as a Boomy. Now, this is when DHs were super broken last season, so this is gonna be a really good um, video for it. So here, um, in the very opener, I'm just trying to get my dots up. I'm trying to get dots up on the healer. I'm playing for a pretty quick game here. Um, so I drop down my Fury Valoon. I send Bash Beam onto the DK so it can IBF. I throw my Incarn all the way through so it hits the healer and we can swap to him. So this way we can do try to do like a double go onto their DK and their healer. Um, this map honestly isn't that big. So looking to go the healer a lot is going to be good for us. Um, here we silence that clone. We're trying to get damage on the DH here. Um, and we're taking a lot of damage. So I'm looking... I'm looking to maybe clone here soon or kite out or get away from the enemy healer to try to drag him. Um, here we're typhooning. We're kind of greeting damage here. If we just take a good second here and just, if we just look at the details right now, um, let's go. Yeah, you could watch that again to see the kind of buttons I was pressing. But I'm basically just jamming star fires here while they're all stacked up. And what's happening is my soul of the forest is going to make those star fires hit super duper hard because there's a bunch of pets. Um, it's not padding on the pets really that much, but it's increasing the damage onto like the DH or the DK on the off target because there's pets to like amp it up a little bit. So star fires are kind of going crazy. We're doing the most damage here in the opener. Notice how like we're not like we can we can really hard kite the opener we can try to but it's a little bit tricky if you can get like double dots on DPS double dots on healer and then send incarn through everybody that's the most optimal get it on everybody do the most damage in the opener because outside of your incarn it's going to be really difficult to do a lot of stuff here so right now I'm trying to play far back I don't want them to go me I want them on my shadow priest if they're on my shadow priest we're winning because I'm just going to do the most damage. It's going to be super hard for them to win. So, um, yeah, right here, I'm just spamming damage. Notice how I'm not really cloning that much. I'm just spamming damage. Spamming it out, spamming it out. Keeping dots on both the DPS. They connect to me. Now I'm going to press Thorns. I'm going to rebuff there. Thorns, Fury Balloon. Both Thorns and Fury Balloon will do the most damage. I probably should have sent that Fury Balloon on the DH. Um, but here, we take a lot of damage, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leap out, Stamping Roar, and then look to reposition. Um, get my dots back up, cast Wraths, Surges, Wrath Surges. I actually went into Starfire Eclipse there, a little bit questionable, but it's actually, it's going to work out fine because of my Warrior Balloon up. Maybe, maybe I meant to do this, I don't know, this game was a, a little while ago when DHs were completely busted. Um, but... Yeah, so it looks like I'm just jamming Starfires for the most damage. Usually, you wouldn't want to do this. This is kind of a greedy play, but um, yeah, looks like it's working out so far. Um, get a nice lasso on the DK. DH could kick that. Yeah, he imprisons it. Usually, you won't want to lasso like that. You're going to want to lasso the DH when it like overextends on the boomy. While they're on the SP, we can just chill and just maximum parse our damage. Um, and notice that this is last season. Like, look at my DPS. This is the last season. I'm doing 150k DPS right here. Um, and we're a minute and a half into this game. And we want to continue to do this. If we continue to do this, we're going to win the mana race for sure. Um, and we're setting... After our Incarn, most of our bashes and our setups are going to be onto the Demon Hunter. Because they're going to be a lot more susceptible to dying and stuns. Um, doing bash beams on DK... Usually it's good with your Incarn, you can like force them to Trinket and Zone. But outside of that, like you usually won't kill them in a Bash Beam unless you have the most damage. But notice here, like I'm just, I'm just parsing them here. And we're going to go over two games. Um, I think the other game they might change that a little bit. But this game we're just staying back. If they don't want to go us, we're not going to go walk in and start spamming clone. And then they just swap to us to shut down clones. We're just going to spam damage. And we're going to, like, we're basically, like, boiling the frog. Like, they don't know that they're losing, but they're actually losing pretty hard right here with how much damage I'm dealing. Um, Mana-wise, we're about even, which is not the best for how much of a damage lead we have. But I think it's just because 
they have a mortal strike. Um, they're also shutting down our priest a little bit. So here they go for a setup and that's the one time I clone the DK. And then outside of the clone, I need to maintain my damage. I send Incarn right away. I'm keeping my damage high. Okay, they zone. Here in the zone, I could look to Cyclone because um, I could look to Cyclone while they're in the zone because they're basically taking no damage and that might make their life blooms fall off or life blooms and all their hots. But here I just stay back. I really don't want them to go me. They should be running at me the entire game. The DH looks at me and I clone him. I don't want him to go me. I want it to be really annoying for them to have to go me. Um, here I'm also keeping an eye on this Residuid. If he tries to Cyclone me, that's also really bad. If he Cyclones me like one or two times, they can win the game because my counter pressuring ability will fall off. Um, here, since they're on my Shadow Priest, I also Thorns him too. So I, I Thorns and then I kite back and I try to force him onto my Shadow Priest. Um, but as soon as I Thorns, he just swap to me, which is not the most ideal. But usually you want to like Thorns and then let him just hit through Shadow Priest. And like kite back to nine from getting to. Here, since I have Incarn up and I have PI, I'm Incarn PI with outplay is actually pretty strong. So I'm kind of staying in a little bit. I'll probably like look to kite soonish here. Um, yeah, so as soon as they start dispelling, yeah, I'm going to kite out. I'm going to try to get more distance here. And I'm playing opposite side of where their healer is. If they ever want to go me, I'm going to position them in the worst possible spot. So, and I'm not looking to cycle on the healer. I've never once gone for a cycle on the healer. If I try to cycle on the healer, they have Death Grip, Mind Freeze, Incap, Pet Kick, DH Kick, so many things. Fell Eruption, they can just stop it whenever they want. Their healer goes for a drink. Um, if I were to cross the map and stop the drink, that would probably get me cycloned. And it's just really unfortunate. So... We can't really do a lot about that drink. If anything, our Shaman has to stop that. Our Shaman has to be the one stopping drinks. If I stop the drink, it's just we're going to fall so far behind. So them forcing a drink would actually like bait me into a really bad position to stop it. And it, it just wouldn't be worth it. Because we would lose so much mana for me running out there and starting to become a target. We really want our Shadow Priest to be the target. Here are Shadow Priest, I Thorns him too. So I'm staying max range, I Thorns my Shadow Priest, and this is how I'm doing maximum damage. Like, keep in mind, again, like this is last season, I'm doing 130k DPS. If this situation were to arise in this season right now, you'd probably be doing 200k DPS, or slightly more. Like, you would be doing the most. So, here, they're kind of doing a setup, they're ceasing our healer, and this is when I'm going to go in for a Cyclone. When I absolutely need to, I'll go in for the Cyclones here. Um, and then otherwise, yeah, I try to Cyclone Trinket because we're so low HP. I think I think he might go for a Trinket there. Um, and then here we go for some damage on the DK, the IBFs. I'm going to look to CC the healer because like they're really low right now and they don't have a lot of hots on that DK. They do get the pre iron bark, and I finally get a clone here. Um, notice how when I went for that clone, let me go back a second. When I went for that clone, I line of sighted. So I bash and I line of sight all the interrupts and I go for the clone. And notice I'm only bash cloning when I have a bunch of momentum on my team. And I can see this momentum by like looking here. So DK has two hots on him. He has Mind Flayer Fiend, he's Void Torrent, he's full dots. Healer's in a silence with no trinket. DK has no trinket. DH is in a clone, so it's almost like a swap clone situation. So, this is a really prime opportunity to go for this bash clone here. So, I wild charge. I flap for a little extra distance. I bash. I line of sight all the interrupts. The DK probably was looking for something. And then I go for the cyclone here. Now, at this stage, they got the pre iron bark, and I don't have a clone to cyclone it, it. Or I don't have a DR. If I could, I really would cyclone that. Ironbark. Um, but yeah, now I'm kind of, see how my positioning kind of sucks now? My DPS, as you, you're going to see, is probably going to start falling off quite a bit because I'm not spamming damage perfecting my rotation. Um, but yeah, so here, we're fear of eluding off CD. We need to keep our damage high. If our damage is not high, you will never beat this comp. If your damage is low, you'll always lose to this because they'll just steamroll you. 
This game is a huge game of momentum. If they get ahead, then it's completely over. What you want to do is at least stay even. Stay even with them or slightly ahead. And in this game, we've been slightly ahead by, I'd say, like 10%. 10, 15% we've been ahead. Whenever they hit me, though, the game is going to fall really far behind. So I need to try to avoid this, take less damage. Um, here, I'm just really trying to maximize my damage with my Incarn. Because I know my healer's not in CC, um, so I'm just I'm just maximizing the DPS. If my healer was in CC at any point there, I would stamp Pinning Roar and start kiting. But here, now they go our Shadow Priest. Um, he has Disperse, he has a couple things. I could look for a Cyclone here. Um, I probably shouldn't have walked in. I think I should have just stayed back and spam damage here. But yeah, maybe, it, maybe it's not terrible, because the healer has Incarn up. So, they're probably not going to die. DH has met up, he's probably not going to die. I'm going to look for some clones here. I try to cycle and trinket because he has met up. Um, and now, like, right now, like, we're actually really far behind. Like, right, right now, we're actually very, very far behind. So, I'm just spam casting damage here because we finally get a stun. I beam, he can't AMS, and he just dies. So, kind of a random kill there, but he trinkets. He trinkets, right? And then as soon as he trinkets or gets low, I beam him. And what this is going to do is he can't press IBF. He can't press zone. He can't press AMS. He can't press basically anything. So this beam right here is going to just like seal the deal on the kill. Um, if you watch the video right before this, you're going to see me do the exact same thing against an enhancement shaman. So they can't grounding totem. So when it's like... When you're so far behind like this, you kind of need to make slightly, de you don't want to make too much of a desperate play, but you need to make like a calculated desperate play, and this beam is kind of that. And also, I'm not really going to beam anything else here, this rest of Jude isn't casting, like, he's not trying to clone me to like stop my counter pressure, so this beam right here is pretty good to seal the deal. And our priest also just hit a massive crit right there, so we do take the win. Um... And also, as dampening gets higher, it's not that high right now, but as dampening does get higher, Death Knight becomes more and more the kill target because they're less mobile and all their defensives are based off of healing for the most part. All their short defensives, all their death strikes, all just based off of healing. DH, I think, passively takes less damage. It definitely does die in stuns, but um, they're harder to kill. Let's go into this next game here. Yeah, I think he hit like a yeah he hit like a 400k like mind spike like it was crazy, but if I didn't beam there, he might have uh, he might have used like AMS or something. So let's go into another game here. We've got DHTK Residue again. Um, let's see, we're on 0.5 speed. Okay, okay, so they're going in. I'm getting my dots up, right? Getting dots up. I pre fury Valoon. All right, we have dots up pre fury Valoon. Next, I'm going to probably want to Thorns and Incarn. So I, I'm, I'm Incarning now. Maybe I Thorns later. But usually if you can pre-Dots, pre-Fury, pre-Thorns, and then after the stun you send Incarn, it's going to be the most damage. So here, we're getting our Dots back up. We could honestly Kite right here. Pressing Stamping, Roaring, getting out wouldn't be a bad idea because they're basically immortal in this zone. Um, but instead, we're actually swapping to the Healer again. We're trying to maximize our damage. Um... Uh, Right now, in the current meta with DH's, like, Season 4, you'd probably, like, kite out here, and you wouldn't have to play so desperate. But we're playing a little bit desperate here, looking for a go on the healer, looking to do as much as we can, because DH's right now are just completely overpowered. So, um, we're, we're just doing as much damage as we can with our Incarn up. We're, we're not, like, taking any, any time to kite. And we also get a free clone on the DH, which is pretty nice. Fake his kick, and I might clone the DK, yeah. Yeah, so we're just cloning CDs, we're slowing down the game. Whenever the enemy healer has Incarn up, so whenever the enemy healer has Incarn up, and they have like meta up, Incarn meta, or like AMS and Holy Frenzy, these guys aren't dying. Like if they're full HP and they have Incarn up, and they have some offensives up, whatever they do to you is going to be like 10x to what you do to them. So looking for a clone in this situation is really, really valuable. And then the DH overextends, and whenever the DH overextends, your rest of Shaman just has to stun him, and we look for a swap onto them. Um, we get a clone. 
cloned on the fear, which isn't like the most insane, but might have been like casting at the same time, just to guarantee didn't like break. So now the healer's in. Since the DH ran all the way back, the healer got baited off the pillar. And now we're just hitting the healer, which is with as much damage as we can, because we want him to put Light Bloom on himself. And that's going to make all the triple stacks fall off of the DPS. I think in general, since the healer had to run in right there to save his DH, all their hots fell off, and that's really good for our team. We we forced our healer to use a lot of mana to get these back up. Um, here we're just putting the DH in a clone. Whenever you can, if the DH is on you, cycloning it's not bad. Honestly, in this game too, I wouldn't mind if I walked back a bit. If I walked back like 30 yards right now, I think I would have been in a much better spot. I'm kind of making the mistake here of staying in when I don't really need to. The only issue is, is our Resto Shaman's line of sight. He would have to run around the pillar to like reposition. But me playing so in isn't as great. I think last game around this point, I was doing about 140, 150k DPS. So right now, I'm doing a slightly less DPS because my positioning isn't as great. I'm just I'm just taking damage to just take damage. It's not really that worth it. It's better for them to just hit into one target and our Arsham doesn't have to like spread his um spread his earth shield around. But I do want to point out the strat of their team as well. I want to point out their strat. Notice how the DK is on the SP and the DH is on the boomy. They're playing counter matchups. So like if you were to play a twos match and you have say Resto Shaman SP versus Arju DK, the DK will always beat the SP. If you have Resto Shaman Boomy versus Arju DH, the DH will always beat the Boomy. So what's happening here is the enemy team is actually doing a split strat and they're putting counter matchups on each caster. So the Boomy right here is getting a counter matchup on the DH and the SP is getting a counter matchup onto the DK. So I can pull the DH really far out and the DH might still just run at me. What they're doing is really, really, really smart. Very smart. And if they do this, you just have to play for CC and like I need to play the DH further out, look to CC or kill him with the Arsham's lasso. Um, but I just wanted to show the strategy right here. You can do this as well as a boomy. You can say you're fighting warrior and a hunter and you're playing you're playing warrior on your team as well or say you're playing dh boomy and you're fighting a warrior hunter team you can have the dh train the hunter and then the boomy drags the warrior back because boomies beat warriors and dhs beat hunters in the 2v2 so you can kind of put a counter matchup and split strat like they're doing here um, so yeah, that's just their team strategy. It's actually very, very, very good. It is a very good strategy. So insane. So yeah, really good strategy by them. I'm trying to stay in the earthen so I can still get some of the AOE healing from my shaman. Um, at least while it's up here. And I'm looking to try to clone, but it's actually insanely hard to clone the DH. He just melds, he glimpsed, he has interrupt. I finally get it. Um, and we're looking to kill the DK here. I think if I were to position a little bit better and like punish this DH with lightning lassos, it would be much better for our team. So, so much better. Okay, so we're doing damage on this guy. We do a lightning lasso on the DK. I beam over it so I can't IBF out. Um, we do get the iron bark. He has send ward for hots. He probably isn't dying here. So it would be nice if I would look for a clone on him. Yeah, he, he has AMS though up now, so I'm going to bash this DH, just get him off me for a second here. What I really should be doing throughout this matchup though, is I should be dragging the DH far back, the Shaman lasses him and we swap in now and then, and then I use Mass Entanglement on the DH, and then I wild charge back, Mass Entanglement, wild charge back, and then I free cycle on him, because like, he can't glimpse, he can only meld if he's in a uh, Mass Entanglement, and if you wall charge back, he won't be in interrupt range. So I think I could have played this matchup actually a lot better if I were to um, just adapt to the strategy and put this DH in more CC. So here I clone the DK because he has full hots. DH has no hots. So he's going to be the best kill target for a second here. It's also enabling my Shadow Priest because he has a DK on him. It's a counter matchup. 
And it's really, it's fine if they both hit the same target, but once they start splitting, it's pretty tough. Um, here, when I press Incarn, they go back to staying on top of each other to get the zone value, but the DH just comes back, because why not? Here, I'm looking to clone the DH. I'm trying to put this DH in CC, but I'm actually doing it all wrong. So this is actually like a good commentary, because I've been actually working on this a lot in my Season 4 gameplay, is that you want to root the DH while charged back, and then clone him. Don't just sit here and spam clone him. Root him with mass entanglement while charged back and clone him. What I'm doing right here is pretty atrocious. You should, you should have tried to just fake his kick, because he could just not kick and stun you at 90%, and then glimpse at 90%. So you can just see my HP, like I'm just getting roasted because I'm not kind of getting what I need to be getting. And then at this point, cloning the, the DK wouldn't be a bad idea too. Because he has IBF up and he has burst up. But yeah, you can see me here just for like 20 seconds trying to get a clone on this guy. And it's actually like, it's actually insane. So now I'm just trying to kill him to just like make him like screw off a little bit. I need the DH off me. Like somehow we gotta get this DK off our SP and the DH off me, because they're like playing counter matchups really hard here. And I'm not doing a very good job of... So here I root, and then I clone. This is what I'm saying. Oh my gosh, I actually do it. That would've been bad if I didn't do it the whole video. Okay, so that's what you want to do. You want to root them while they're a little far away, and then cyclone them, and it's just free. Every single time it's free, unless they have Shadow Meld. They might be able to Fell Eruption too, but... Um, I think the range on fell eruption is a little bit longer, and if they're in a root while they fell eruption, they're CC'd on their fell eruption, so it's not even worth it for them. So, yeah, root and then clone the DH. That's how you handle DHs, like, actually. So much better. Now they're converging onto our Shadow Priest, this is good. I'm walking in to look to clone, but honestly, if I just stayed back, it would have been a little bit better. Um, I'm trying to, like... We haven't really been getting that much good stuff going on, so I'm trying to, like, recover us with some clones, but I really just need to stay back and pump when the DH swaps to, to my SP. Because it's best if they hit the same target for our Resto Shaman healing. And here, notice how I Cyclone off my Bash? We're definitely not going to kill him there, and he has so many stops to stop my Cyclone. So I'm going to try to clone him right there so he can't, like, stop me 20 times and put me at 10% HP just doing his PV rotation on me. Um, notice one thing here, is, this is like, for all the healers out there, if you want to go for a drink when you're fighting a melee cleave, it's so good, because look at the positioning, like, he's forcing the DK in bad positioning to stop the drink on our healer, and then their healer has to walk out, which he might get CC'd, and the DK is in a terrible spot now, and just like that, we get Iron Bark AMS, like, that's basically their main defensive cooldowns for that DK. So, yeah. Here, yeah, I look for these clones. I just need a root wild charge out and clone them. And then we'd get more clones on them. I think here I'm trying to clone the DK because he has Iron Bark and stuff up. So I root him. I should clone DH. I might swap it though. I don't know. The healer is pretty far out, so I might be looking to like prime the DK up and just kill him here. Yeah, that's, I think that's what I'm doing. We have stun silence ready, so I'm not cloning the DK. We're like ready to do a setup here. We get a little lasso here. Not too impactful, we can't really do too much on it. I try to clone the DK to cover the lasso to like maybe get some more out of the DH, but can't get too much off. I look for the beam there, but he's line of sight. He's looking for a drink with that regrowth. You'll see this a lot. Healers will like regrowth themselves, the rest of Druids. So it looks like you're healing the DPS, but it's actually not. It's like a bait. They're actually dropping combat right here because they're just healing themselves line of sight. And then they'll look for a drink. Um, so yeah, so now they just go for a drink. And I, I kind of see that they're baiting regrowths. I know the strat, so I, I go over and I stop that pretty preemptively. Um, and then now we're back. Uh, we don't have Wild Charge here because we Wild Charge to stop that drink, so it's going to be a little bit trickier to get out here. Uh, wild Charge is nice to just use off CD because it's off GCD. So you can press damage abilities while you're Wild Charging. We get a full Fear here. They're all my Resto Shaman and all my Priests, so now this is like pretty pretty hard for us to deal with. Our, our Shaman and our Priests are kind of rotting down. So I might look for a Cyclone here, um, but we're also setting a a setup here on the DK, so we're just parsing him. 
Yeah, I don't think I've played this game very well, actually. This isn't, like, the best example of what to do. This is, like... I mean, we win against one of the best DHs, like, DHKs in the game as, like, a really bad comp to them, um, especially when they're OP, but I think I could be more efficient with some of my Cyclones on this DH because our team really needs it at this point. I think... And look how free the clone is. I guess he just melds it. Okay, then I go for it again. Okay, and I get it. And now we should recover. Now our HP should recover. I think I need to root that DH more and Cyclone more off those roots. The Mass and Tango roots. And here we just look for a swap onto him. He has zero hots on himself. So we look for a go onto him. There we go. We get Trinket Netherwalk. Pretty good cooldown. Now the healer has no Trinket. DH has no Trinket. We clone him low. And we're looking to get a bash on this healer right now. They're so low, he has no hots, no recoverability. I'm looking for that bash, and our priest just gets to death. Um, so I think the healer must have like line aside at the DH because I was looking for it. But yeah, we just get the death and kill him. So that game wasn't played that well. Um, but if <laughs> if you if you like take what I'm saying, like if you root the DH and clone him and just try to stay out and max parse. I think the first game was played much better. I think this first game was played very, very clean. But the second game, when they start to go you, I don't think I handled it very well. But I think I think you guys can handle it better than I did there. Um, but thank you guys for watching. I hope this is helpful. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.